What we can see of the ball appears to be teed up and ready to go. And off we go from Seattle. Lock at the return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. We take a closer look at Russell Wilson, the Pro Bowl quarterback in his seventh season out of Wisconsin. So knowing the style of offense that Seattle favored or has favored during Russell Wilson's time there, raise your hand if you thought you'd see him lead the league in touchdown passes. My hand's down right now. That's what I thought. He only had 21 in 2016, so we didn't see that part coming. The Seahawks missed the playoffs for the first time in Russell Wilson's tenure last season, but expect that to change going forward. Yeah, 34 touchdown passes last year on the heels of the 21 you mentioned the season before. A gain of four on the play, and it's a second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Looking to throw on second down. Wilson steps away. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Doug Baldwin, 68 yards. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. Not a bad way to start it. And I think that that was part of their script because so many teams script their opening possessions. And, and whether it's just that possession or even deeper into the half, sometimes it's 15 to 30 plays. That had to be one in there where they call a shot play. Go for the big one, and they got it done. Sebastian Janikowski on for the PAT. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Out to kick is Janikowski. This will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. The former number one overall pick leads them out there. Jared Goff in his third season now as the quarterback of the Rams. It always comes down to the talent of a player first. But never underestimate what good coaching can do for you as well. How about Jared? Goff, 0-7 as a rookie, to 11-4 in an NFC West title in the second season. The arrival of Sean McVay and his staff, they really jumped up his game. 28 touchdowns, just seven interceptions in 2017. They go play action here on first down. It's all in by Brandon Cooks. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. Throwing on third, Goff. 
And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Oh, he'll field it in the end zone. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Seahawks will take over at their own 20. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. On first and ten, it's Wilson buying time to his left. The ball comes out, and this one's going to go out of bounds, so no recovery, but on fourth down, a change of possession anyway. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I don't know about you, but I could hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Involved goes over the sideline, able to retain possession, no turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. Dancing to his left. And it's hauled in by Nick Vanell. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive. It comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last we saw when they went through two-minute drill when they went through all the different situations ball hardly hit the ground and I thought yeah he might be locked in for this one Wilson throwing on first down fighting his safety valve here that's complete and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory 15 more there and they're on a roll it's another first down the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Wilson now already at 100 yards passing in this first quarter. It's first and 10. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move as they face a second down here. Penny and an alley to run. 20. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Rashad Penny, 48 yards. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Janikowski now for the point after. Janikowski adds the extra point, And that'll make the score 14 to zip. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. Out to kick is Janikowski. Cooper on the return. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, 
probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Go on. And Cooks hands it over the middle. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. He has enough for the first down on the keeper, a gain of six. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Earlier this half, you were wondering how the defense was going to handle him defensively. Were they going to bottle him up at different levels, so to speak, is what you said. What have you seen so far? Well, I think they've been absolutely terrific because it feels like on every play, if we were watching this in the film room, when they clicked off the film or stopped it, you would see 11 shirts of that same color right there in the frame trying to tackle it. That's what you're looking for. A reminder coming up at halftime while the two of us head for warmer areas of the press box. We'll be sending you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end Everett. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll kick it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Now this is fielded in the end zone. So a change of possession here on the punt. And this offense is going to take over at their own 20-yard line. Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. It's caught right side, Dixon. And they'll get him down here at the 23. The completion good for three, and it's second down. To throw on second down. Wilson being chased out left. They'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. Here's Wilson. And that is incomplete. We've already seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They thought he can win every battle. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Wilson. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. 
Now Wilson steps away to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Here we go on fourth with Wilson, eluding the pressure right. And this is going to be incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Rams get the football in outstanding field position. So just shy of midfield, they tried it, didn't work out. What did you think? I thought that they should have punted the ball away. Should have gotten rid of it and played defense with better field position. I'm as aggressive as anyone wanting to go for it on offense, but in this situation, it yeah, first half. I don't know that there's any risk. I mean, what's the reward for, for your risk here? I would not have done that. My only explanation is this coach, he may want to be up here in the booth with us. We may have a three-man booth starting next week if he keeps up with those decisions. Here's Goff now on second down. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. Give him two yards on that play, and they're going to have a third down. Hey, 76, 76, 76. Go, 12, go. Not, not. From the gun on third down, go. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Five yards on the pickup. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And Zerline's kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. and be backed up to the 24. And now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And the Rams now coming out on the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never wanted to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do real, I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. To throw on second down is gone. It's caught left side by Cooks. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Goff in the offense with a first and 10. And he's hit on his first nine passes now in the ball game. On first down, it's gone. And get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Now a first down throw. Gone. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. 
I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley, 27 yards. And the Rams have got this back to a one-score game. Well, partner, that was another explosive run, and one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt, you need that difference maker lugging the rock. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands, he just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere. Seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Out routes are always timing. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Flushed out right. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. 14, 14. Now Wilson on first down. Forced out to his left. Incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. On the run, it's Penny. And he's got Rome. And he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So, from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Dumps that off to Penny, his running back. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Seahawks with the possession. They also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth and final quarter. Now Wilson on second down. Buying time to his left. Throw left side complete. That's Carson. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain. And just like that, it's third down. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. Leaves it for Pennington. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Throwing is Wilson. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. And the ball is smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. They get it to him running left. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. 
They've got it third and goal now as they look for that final touchdown to salt this one away. Here's Wilson to throw. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in about the time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains. I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Janikowski good with the extra point and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. Out to kick is Janikowski. Cooper on the return. Turn. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Hey, 76! 76! Goff on first down. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Clock continuing to roll as the Rams try to get going again. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. He's going to let it fly. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Tried to go for the big one there on second. And down now they're likely down to their final two plays and you know they've got to keep going for the big shot right so defensively you play what they call top down nothing behind you make everything get completed man open it's cup he's got it and he's taken down but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. a big 30-yard play on third golf throwing again over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. A good pick up there, 26 yards. On first down, gone. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the 5 at the 6. Call it a gain of 5. And that'll make this a second down. Again, golf. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still third down. And this offense back to needing 10 yards after the false start. Third and 10. Maverick, Throwing on third. Gone. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Woods, the intended receiver. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt, and in a big way. The Seahawks now set to take over on offense. Defensively, there's still three timeouts. I, do you even need to use them at this point? I think a lot of coaches do it anyway, and it seems like cosmetics to us. Does it just send a message you're not quitting? Send a message that, that you're not quitting. Let your team know you're going to battle all the way, and you're always hoping for that ultimate miracle. Something will happen. You'll pick up the ball and score, and you'll have a chance one more time or maybe on an onside kick, but not likely. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Oh, 
Wilson wants to throw it. Dance into his left. And some room to work. Room to run inside the 40. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Now those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure. Good coverage downfield. And then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice game. for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. He was trying to hit his big receiver, Brandon Marshall, and now it's second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, partner, there's something special about a game in the snow. Just always fun in these elements, although a little chillier up here in the open-air booth. The only thing that's not fun is that we got the mid-game notification that our <laughs> flight was canceled tonight, but we'll deal with that later. It was really a fun game to watch, though. It was, and there is something special about games played in the snow because the element of surprise really kicks in. You don't know how they're going to handle the ball, if someone's going to make a dramatic play just out of nowhere, and all of a sudden it just changes the course of things. But a big shout-out to our crew to make sure that we were comfortable up here, as comfortable as one could be in these elements. They took care of us and made sure we were dressed properly. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports.